God has used dreams to communicate with people. One of those people was King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Daniel, the second chapter, tells how Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream in which God provided an overview of world events in the millennia yet to come. King Nebuchadnezzar reigned from 605 to 562 BC, greatly expanding the Babylonian Empire, conquering Jerusalem and deporting the Jews in the process. One night, Nebuchadnezzar awoke, frightened by a dream. The king called for his magi to interpret the nightmare. Tell me what my dream was and interpret it. So not only did the royal wise men have to provide the interpretation of the dream, they had to recount the dream itself. The penalty for failure was death. Every magician, enchanter, sorcerer, and astrologer in the kingdom would be executed. What the king asked for is impossible, they said. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among men. When Daniel heard this, he was determined to prove God's power to the king. Daniel asked the king for some time to discover the dream, and then he proceeded to pray all night with his three fellow exiles. God revealed the dream to him, and Daniel and his friends praised God. The next morning, he went to the king and told him about the dream. The dream was a glorious statue of a man. Its head was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, and its feet partly iron and partly baked clay. Then a rock, not cut by human hands, hit the foot of the statue and the whole image became like chaff on a threshing floor, while the rock became a huge mountain and filled the entire earth. Daniel's interpretation given to him by God explains that the statue represents a series of kingdoms each less glorious than the one before, as indicated by the decreasing value of metals. Daniel identifies Nebuchadnezzar as the head of gold, stating that God had given Nebuchadnezzar much power. The next kingdom to arise will be inferior to Babylon, as will the next. Finally, there will come a fourth kingdom, strong as iron. It will crush and break all the others. Finally, the feet of mixed clay and iron will be a divided kingdom. During the time of this final world empire, a rock will smash them to bits. God will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. All previous earthly kingdoms will be brought to an end. We are presently living in the time of the divided kingdom where the toes of iron and clay are mixed together. Next Wednesday, we will discuss in detail the divided papal kingdom of Rome. God bless you as you consider finding out more about these marvelous times in which we live. Share this with everyone.